Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking off the, the flywheel, the camshaft, and then the valve springs for my 212 power fist, but it's also just a Honda clone, so a Predator or a GX160 or a GX112, any of those will work. So to start with, uh, I'm just de deconnecting all the wires, and then I'll move on to the side case for the flywheel as that's what we'll be doing first. To start, we're taking off this flywheel. Um, it was a bit complicated. It's more complicated to get it back on. The reason I want it off is because the plastic at high RPMs or if the governor's removed, if you're running NOS, will uh, come out the engine like uh, bullets and shatter, right? Because it's only plastic. I'm now taking off the magneto or, or magnet thing that allows the uh, engine to spark. get the flywheel off everybody makes it so simple online but you're supposed to put the bolt over it so you don't hit the uh, crank shaft and then smack it once with the hammer and then all the videos it just comes straight off well that was not the fucking case for me I had uh, I sat there for about an hour trying to get it off and I used a different method than the end that you'll see coming up I then tried to wedge the end engine with wooden wedges as I put force on it and then did the tap method at the same time. That also didn't work. Uh, I ended up having to call my dad in to help me out just because he's a bit more experienced. You gotta be careful doing this because you don't want to crack the case or any of the parts in general. This was the method I used in the end. There's a little overlip on the flywheel on the front side, so I got a brass rod, and I'd hit it with a rubber hammer, turn it about a quarter inch, hit it again. The next challenge was uh, getting the new flywheel on, but that wasn't the problem. It was holding it down while we torqued it to 50 foot pounds. And so the first method was to put a belt around it, but if you notice here, I forgot a very vital part right which is the aluminum cup that allows the pull start to go so I ended up having to pull it off twice and then retwork it twice but as I don't have a flywheel puller I used the belt and screwed it down to the piece of wood that seemed to work better and then I also used another method right and that was to jam a piece of wood so that the wood got damaged opposed to the fins Here I'm reattaching the magneto magnet fucking thing and you want to make sure to have your shivs to make sure it's the exact right distance away from the wheel. Next we're cracking open the crankcase on the other side as I forgot to record me reassembling the flywheel side. That uh, plastic camshaft is the one I'll be replacing now as I don't want it to shatter or break at high RPMs. Next I'm just pulling out this uh, camshaft. As you can see it's made of plastic and I didn't want it to shatter at high RPMs. Replacing it with just a cheap little Amazon one. It's the stock one for the GX uh, 160 
you will have to adjust the valve covers or, or the valve lash as uh, their different heights for the KX160, which I would have been doing anyway because I'm replacing the valve springs. You can't see it in this video, but I did make sure to go back and replace and use assembly lube to put the cam in so that way we're not getting much grinding when we're first starting. These bolts are all torqued to 17 foot pounds, but as you can see coming up here in a bit, uh, Clearly my torque wrench, wrench wasn't calibrated and I did strip one of the bolts. So in the end, I'm gonna have to go and uh, re-drill and put a bolt hole on the other side. Or a bolt on the other side, because luckily the one that I stripped went right through to the other side. And uh, I'll just bolt it, I'll add that in the upcoming clip. Next, we're going to be replacing the stock spring, or valve springs with uh, some 18 pound valve springs to help uh, at higher RPMs. So we're going to start by loosening the lock knot with a 14, 14 underneath and then a 10 above. After that, we'll remove the knockers. I've seen people do this a couple ways, but the next step is to remove the spark plug and uh, put a piece of paracord down there so the valves don't fall down into the engine bay and you have to go digging. We're just simply going to push down on the springs and push the hole or the pin into the hole and then on the exhaust valve we have to take off the cap first and repeat the same step. As for the new springs, we're just going to do it in reverse order and it might take a bit to compress them if they're, uh, if they're a bit larger, right? The next step is to make sure your piston is completely at the top of its uh, core and you're going to check the valve lash. So for me I used 0.05 on the intake and 0.07 on the exhaust. 
it took a bit of fiddling you had to go back and forth almost just because each time you lock tighten the lock nut it would also tighten the lash and you just want a bit of wiggle in between the lash uh, or you want a bit of wiggle in the lash in between the rocker and the spring The only step after that is to return the cover for the valves and you're pretty well done. Thanks for watching the video guys if you liked it give it a like if you didn't i don't care either way so uh yeah